Analyzing a Graph, Lesson 4.3b. Many real-world situations can be represented by linear relationships. We can use graphs of linear relationships to visualize situations and solve problems. A linear relationship is shown as a straight line on a graph. Given an equation, we can write the slope as a fraction, plot the point for the y-intercept, use the slope to locate a second point, and draw a line through the two points. Dave has a weekly goal of burning 1,800 calories by walking. The equation y is equal to negative 200x plus 1,800 represents the number of calories y Dave has left to burn after x hours of walking, which burns 200 calories per hour at the pace he walks. We have y, which is the total number of calories. We have negative 200, that's the calories per hour that are burned. We have x, that's the number of hours he's going to walk. We have 1,800, which is his weekly goal of calories to burn. We graph the equation y is equal to negative 200x plus 1800. First thing we do is write the slope as a fraction. We have negative 200, we're going to have negative 200 over 1. Now we plot the point for the y-intercept 1800. So here's the y-axis, we plot the 1800 on the y-axis. Now we use the slope to locate a second point. We have negative 200 over 1 which is equal to negative 400 over 2, which is also equal to negative 600 over 3. By using a multiple of the slope, it may be easier to graph. Instead of having a run of just 1, we can have a run of 3. Our run is 3, and our rise is negative 600. Our run is 3 units, so we have 2 squares is 1 unit, so we go 1, 2, 3, that puts us here, and then we go down 600. That puts us right here. We draw a line through both points, from the 1800 through this point. We can see after one hour, he has 1600 calories to burn for the week. And after two hours, that would be right here, a run of two, he has 1400 calories to burn for the week. And we can see how many calories he's got to burn if we keep coming down. Jim rented a post hole digger to install a birdhouse. The total cost Y in dollars to rent the post hole digger is a flat fee of $6 plus $5 per hour. Our equation is the total cost Y is equal to that $5 per hour times x, the number of hours he's going to rent it, plus that $6 flat fee. The total cost will depend on the number of hours he rents the tool, plus the initial $6 flat fee. Our equation is y is equal to 5x plus 6. We write the slope as a fraction, so we have 5 over 1. We plot the point for the y-intercept, the 6. So on the y-axis, we plot 6 right here. We use the slope to count the run, which is 1, and the rise, which is 5. So we come over 1, and we go up 5, because it's a positive 5. We're going to go up, and we draw a line through those points. So we draw a line from this point through this point, and we have it continue on. The slope is 5 over 1, written as a fraction. Now, if we try using a multiple of the slope, like we did in the other problem, our rise and run may become difficult to work with. If we want to have a run of 4 so that we have more room, that means our rise is going to be 20, and that is going to be very difficult to work with. It might be better to work with the 5 over 1 or maybe 10 over 2 so that we're not counting a huge rise going up. So as you're doing this, remember that the slope is the coefficient of x, it's to the left of x, and the y-intercept b 
is the last term of the equation. That is where it's going to cross the y-axis. If the slope is a positive number, the line will rise to the right, and if the slope is a negative number, the line will fall to the right. Here we have an equation, y is equal to 3x plus 2. We're going to say that the 2 is $2 to enter a carnival. The 3 is $3 per ride, x is going to be the number of rides, and y is going to be the total spent. Now we can solve this by reading the graph, or making a graph, or we could substitute a number for x. If we use a graph, we know the y-intercept is 2, so we plot a point at 2. We know the rise and run is going to be a 3 over a 1 when we write this as a fraction. So we have a run of 1, a rise of 3. That puts us right here. That means if there is one ride, it will cost $5. y is equal to 3 times 1 plus 2 substituting the 1 for x. That means we have 3 plus 2. That means y is equal to $5. So by either substituting the amount for x into the equation or by graphing it, we can see one ride would be a total cost of $5. We're going to finish with lesson 4.3, and we're going to be moving on to 4.4. We're going to distinguish between proportional and non-proportional situations using a graph. Keep moving forward, keep trying your best, and please join me for the next lesson. Bye.